Today, we're diving into the latest in tech, EVs, and Tesla news. This includes fresh software features rolling out to all Teslas, Tesla pushing back on robo-taxi transparency rules, a delay for Tesla's new AI chip, Polestar adding Google Gemini to their cars, and much more. Let's get to it. First up, Tesla owners know the drill, always new software updates. I covered the upcoming Tesla holiday update in my last video, but meanwhile, app version 4.51.0 has introduced some cool additions like animated weather visuals in the Home tab for those with wall connectors, power wall, or solar setups. These animations show clouds, rain, sunlight movement, and even snow. Tesla also added a visual update for homes with multiple wall connectors to display two garages. Rumor has it, Tesla might introduce an FSD subscription gift card soon just to get people to try FSD, maybe gift it to someone who's skeptical but curious. As for the cars, Software 2025.38 brought new features and some hidden tweaks. Santa Mode is now available for the 2026 Model S and X with Unreal Engine, which is new for these models. The Tesla app and cars let you keep accessory power on remotely, offering more control even when away. Service Mode has improved with new features for better maintenance and diagnostics. Safety is always Tesla's priority. Their vehicles rank among the safest globally. The refreshed 2026 Model Y earned a top 5-star rating from Euro NCAP's toughest new tests, beating previous versions and showing Tesla's strong commitment to safety. The refreshed Model Y did even better this time. This testing round is actually the last one before Euro NCAP tightens its 2026 safety rules. Key highlights include a 93% score for child occupant protection, tying the best in this year's group. It got full marks for crash protection using 6- and 10-year-old dummies and successfully fitted all recommended child seats. For vulnerable road users like pedestrians and cyclists, it scored 86%, placing second and improving over the previous Model Y. For safety assist, the Model Y led with a 92% score, despite no new hardware upgrades. Clearly, it's built to handle the tougher safety standards coming soon, but we'll see how it holds up when those kick in. It's always awesome that the Model Y isn't just designed to meet one country's rules. It keeps excelling worldwide. That said, while Tesla's safety game is strong here, their approach to the robo-taxi network seems to be a bit different. The CPUC, or California Public Utilities Commission, is working on new rules for robo-taxi services in California. Tesla, Waymo, and Uber have all weighed in, but Tesla strongly opposes a plan requiring detailed quarterly reports on miles driven, trip times, and incidents involving advanced driver assist systems like Tesla's current full self-driving. Tesla says these ADIS systems, which still need a human driver, aren't the same as fully autonomous cars and shouldn't be held to the same reporting rules. Waymo and Uber argue that ride-hailing services with ADAS shouldn't be marketed as fully autonomous and need more oversight to avoid confusing customers. The key issue is the difference between fully driverless cars with no human safety driver and human-supervised ADS systems. Tesla wants lighter reporting rules for these supervised systems, while Waymo and Uber push for stricter transparency and labeling. It's a tricky spot because they call it full self-driving, but right now it's really just a driver assistance system, even in its full version in Austin, Texas. Sure, it works well, but there are safety drivers standing by, ready to take control if needed. I wonder, why wouldn't Tesla be totally upfront about this if their system is as good as they claim? claim. On the robo-taxi front, Elon Musk confirmed on X that mass production of Tesla's AI5 chip won't start until mid-2027, which is later than we expected. Because of this delay, the Tesla CyberCab, which was supposed to launch with the AI5 chip, will now debut using the current AI4 hardware. Tesla recently reviewed the AI5 design and said that although Samsung and TSMC are involved in production, the main bottleneck still exists. The CyberCab was planned for April 2026, but since AI5 won't be ready by then, it'll launch with AI4. For some, this is a letdown, but for others, 
That might be exciting news if you were holding out for that new chip because it's supposed to be a big leap. Elon Musk said while the AI5 chip is 40 times more powerful for some AI tasks, it isn't absolutely necessary for unsupervised driving. It's more about boosting performance and efficiency than enabling new features. One big upside is lower power use, which will really help their humanoid robot Optimus, but it's less critical for cars since they have big batteries. Meanwhile, the latest full self-driving update is now arriving for customers. Version 14.2 is officially rolling out now. Tesla's release notes mention that they've upgraded the neural network vision encoder, using higher resolution data to better handle tricky situations like emergency vehicles, obstacles on the road, and interpreting human gestures more accurately. Meanwhile, over in China, Tesla has reintroduced two models that hadn't been available for quite some time. 2026 Model S and Model X actually appeared in the US market first. That has sparked a lot of discussion about whether the Model X will continue to sell well, given shifting customer preferences and market trends. The Model YL, packed with features and reasonably priced, was initially available only in China. But now, these models, still made at Tesla's Fremont plant in California, are finally rolling out here too. Right now, you can only buy them if they're in stock. No custom orders yet. If you're interested, they'll be here soon. Overall, just aligns this model with Tesla's other affordable cars. Meanwhile, over in California, there's been a long-standing plan to ban new gas car sales by 2035. This issue is getting serious. It started with the California Air Resources Board, or CARB. California, thanks to a federal Clean Air Act waiver, can enforce stricter vehicle emissions rules, but CARB says it currently can't enforce them due to challenges like high EV costs, reduced tax incentives, and limited charging infrastructure in some areas. CARB has begun rulemaking for new emission standards and aims to finalize them by summer 2027. This could change how emissions are handled in California and possibly influence other states. The 2035 EV goal is very ambitious. EV mandates have worked in places like Norway due to strong incentives and great charging networks, not just strict rules. But Norway's population is just 5.6 million, while Los Angeles alone has nearly 3.9 million. The U.S. is vast and diverse. So simply copying what Norway did won't be enough. Infrastructure, costs, and acceptance vary widely, making the 2035 target a tough challenge across different states and regions. EV mandates are getting trickier because lifestyles and opinions vary widely across the country. Plus, EVs remain pricey for many buyers. Remember, the $25,000 Tesla promised in 2020 is now the $37,000 Model 3 standard, or maybe the future Cybercab. What's your take on these mandates? Are they a step back for California or just an inevitable shift in automotive policy? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment and let me know what you think about these changes and their impact on the future of transportation. Next up, Tesla has finalized its fix for the recall of the optional off-road light bar on some Cybertrucks. Instead of just glue, they're now using a bolt-on solution, which many actually saw coming. When this light bar first launched, it was simply glued onto the Cybertruck's glass which raised quite a few concerns. The problem specifically affects vehicles where the accessory was installed using the wrong surface primer. This primer weakened the adhesive considerably, which then increased the risk of the light bar falling off while driving. Tesla's new solution should make this much safer and more secure going forward. The new fix involves adding a mechanical bracket to securely attach the light bar to the car's roof. If the light bar shows any peeling or damage, Tesla will remove it, clean the area, apply strong tape and new primer, then fit the bracket. If it's fine, they'll just install the bracket. Before this, there was a recall when the accelerator pedal cover could come loose and actually hold the pedal down. Also, Eden Red is teaming up with Tesla and their supercharger network to bring Tesla's fast charging to Eden Red's fleet services all over Europe. With this integration, fleet operators using Eden Red's mobility solutions get access to over 20,000 Tesla superchargers across more than 1,500 European locations. One of Tesla's biggest strengths is definitely its supercharger network. But it's not just about the network. The hardware itself is top-notch and makes it all possible. Now, Tesla's partnering with third-party operators to offer their hardware, which feels like the best of both worlds, expanding reach where others want to operate. But Tesla's hardware remains the most reliable out there for charging.
charging. I'm really excited about this expansion and interested to see even more growth and new partners using Tesla's supercharger hardware down the line. Meanwhile, in the US, Tesla officially launched a supercharger station owned by a third party, but managed and operated by Tesla. It's called Suncoast Charging in Lando Lakes, California, featuring eight charging stalls. This is part of Tesla's supercharger for business program where property owners buy the hardware and install it, but Tesla takes care of operations, maintenance, and billing. With non-Tesla EV makers adopting the North American charging standard, Tesla isn't just a car company anymore. It's becoming a major EV charging infrastructure provider for the whole market. Next, Polestar announced that Gemini, Google's next-gen AI voice assistant, will come to every Polestar model via OTA updates. Gemini builds on the Google Assistant already in Polestar cars, but it adds much deeper conversational skills. You'll be able to follow up with questions and enter a Gemini live mode where drivers can say, Hey Google, let's talk. This rollout should start in 2026, beginning with US English and then adding more languages soon after. Polestar has already previewed this tech showing their focus on boosting both digital and in-car experiences. It also hints at where the industry's heading. We're seeing Amazon Alexa Plus integrated into BMWs. Gemini is rolling out in Polestar vehicles. I bet OpenAI will team up with someone soon, Grox in Tesla's cars, and hopefully it'll get more features, maybe in the holiday update. That's all for today's latest tech, EV, and Tesla updates. Thanks for watching, and catch you in the next video.